How you doing guys? Big Mac Dance Call here today, back once again with another video for you. It's Mortal Realms time. Yes, that's right. Issue 11 of Mortal Realms has been in my possession. I've read through it and I'm going to give you the rundown of what's inside. Stay tuned. Whoa, 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 before we go any further though, I want to say a massive thank you to a brand new patron of mine, Mr. Billy Binks. Thank you for being an immortal sponsor and sponsoring this episode of Mortal Realms. Well, what can I say? Uh, the, the immortal sponsors have been really amazingly supportive. They've enabled me to get this far in Mortal Realms and provided some of them stick around, at least some of them, they'll enable me to keep buying it week after week. It's absolutely fantastic. Not just for Immortal Sponsors though, there are other pledge levels available. Uh, so the Immortal Sponsorship, you're basically buying me an issue of the magazine. Um, it's a $12 pledge level. There's a $5 pledge level if your budget's a little lower but you still want to support the channel in some way. And below that, there's a $1 pledge level as well. Um, so yeah, if you can support the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Pop along to the Patreon, Patreon rather. There's a link in the description below as always. So let's crack on with what's inside this issue. Well first off, what do we get with this issue? Well we get the Sigmarite Mausoleum Part 1. Ooh, so it's coming in two parts and it's, from what I can tell, uh, from what I understand, it seems like we're actually just getting half of the Sigmarite Mausoleum kit that's on G Game James, Workshop, James Workshop's website. It seems like we're just getting half of it. So we're getting like three buildings, a statue and some fences and walls. And in this issue, we're getting the three buildings and some fences. So it's just the walls and the statue that's left to come in a future issue. Um, but the we also get in a future issue some uh, sort of like stands for the buildings and the statue. So that's uh, why it's been split over the two issues. But anyway, yeah, the value is what you want to know about, isn't it? So. The Sigmarite Mausoleum from Games Workshop is £55 and this issue is £7.99. So if we were to get a full Sigmarite Mausoleum, over, it would be spread out over four issues. So that would be £32 for a full Sigmarite Mausoleum. It's like a 40% saving. It's like 41.2% saving or something ridiculous like that. It's a really good saving. You're not going to find a better saving out there unless you're buying second hand off eBay or from... Um, what's the other one? Amazon. And at the minute, uh, with the global situation, lockdown in place in various areas. Various areas, ooh. Um, yeah, it's going to be tricky for you to get items shipped to you from companies and stuff like that as well. Um, so if you can still find an issue of Mortal Realms issue 11 in the shops, then I recommend you grab that for yourself. Um, yeah, so what else is in the issue? Well, we're getting Stormhost Part 3. That's the third part of lore and information about how the Stormhosts are made up. And using terrain in your games. Ooh, very exciting stuff. Onto the first page, we get Chambers and Conclaves. This is the bit about the Stormhosts, as you probably could have guessed. Stormhosts are split into, or divided into, smaller organisations known as Chambers. And the Chambers vary in size from large strike chambers to smaller, more elite extremist chambers. Or large... I've not written very good notes for this per first page, but the chambers vary in size from the large strike chambers to the smaller, more elite chambers like the extremist, extremist chambers. Um, the large strike chambers are made up of potentially hundreds of warriors and Chambers like the extremist chambers, they're so elite that maybe it's only up to 30 warriors within the extremist chambers. Um, warriors in each chamber are grouped into conclaves depending on their type. So, for example, a Redeemer conclave is frontline soldiers, and a Just a Care conclave is ranged, ranged troops. Oh, couldn't get my tongue around that then. Uh, there's many battles raging across the mortal realm, so the chambers, the chamber system basically enables the storm host to fight as individual, not units, but as individual platoons, if you like, um, groups of warriors um, that can be broken down, but the, the organization is still there and the chain of command is still there to allow them to fight effectively, basically. Um, 
Onto the next page, we get colours of the storm hosts. Um, our Lord Celestine chooses both the colour of the plume on a Stormcast helmet and also the the tactics that they use in battle and the way they fight on the battlefield and things like that. Um, I'm going to focus now on the Knights of the Aurora, um, just as a quick example. No storm host is quicker to reach battle. Uh, they are true masters of rapid rapid assault. I think that's supposed to say, but my writing is terrible. Uh, they crush their foes before they can bring their weapons to bear. Before the foes, that is, can bring their weapons to bear. Not before they themselves can bring their weapons to bear. That wouldn't make much sense. And the reason I picked these out is because I just really like the colouring, so I wanted to stick a picture of it up behind me or focus in on the picture. If I've planned this out right, I'll be zooming in on the picture right now and it'll be in its glory up there. Oh, look at it. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Anyway, on to the next page. A Thousand Storms. Um, so this is a bit of a lore section here. The Age of Myth it starts off with. Sigmar unites the mortal tribes um, and they were sort of like fractured, these mortal tribes from the world that was. The, the ones that survived the world that was anyway. Um, they, were, they were in sort of disparate groups um, but he united them under his rule. And um, he started to build cities um, and mortal nations started to thrive and all sorts. This, um, all during the age of myth, um, he wanted to create a better place for them to live, basically. Um, but unfortunately, once these cities and the nations rose up, the flaws and desires and jealousies that divide cultures uh, sprung into being once again. Um, and these cultures, the once had common goals were all of a sudden divided in many ways. Uh, the Chaos Gods took advantage of this and uh, they, as they do, they uh, preyed on the weak-minded and the jealous and the um, vengeful and they, they preyed on those desires to better the your cousins in another city, you might want to say. Um, so they took advantage of that and they broke into the mortal realms once again. Um, at the Battle of the Burning Skies, Sigmar, wait a minute, I've skipped a bit there. The Chaos Gods take advantage of their divisions, gather, uh, yes, yeah, so they gather the corrupted mortals to their cause. Mortals start praying to the Chaos Gods um, for help in order to outdo their neighbours, basically. Um, and it escalates quite quickly. Um, demons enter the mortal realms and enslave the mortals that had worshipped them and as well as other mortals that are less willing um, and then it kicked off big massive fight starts happening war rages for 100 years and at the battle of burning skies Sigmar really realizes that he's fighting a losing battle so what he does in this instance he retreats to the realm of the heavens and closes the gates to his ear behind him locking away what mortals he can get inside Locking them away from the Chaos Gods and sort of just like worrying about the ones on the outside. And this um, sort of heralds the Age of Chaos where Chaos reigns in the mortal realms. Uh, the Red Sentry, Chaos reigns in the mortal realms, oh I've just written that down on my notes earlier. Uh, mortals are enslaved by the minions of the Chaos Gods, so that's all the Nurgles and uh, the Chaos Worshippers as well. They enslave anyone who isn't willing to openly worship the Chaos Gods, or, you know, behind closed doors as well. Um, a new army is made, is brought into being by Sigmar and his friend, Ish, his, one of his allies, uh, Grungni. I looked at the pronunciation of that uh, just before I recorded this video, so that's why it was so deliberate, that pro pronunciation. Um, yeah, so Grungni is a great maker. He is basically like God of the Dwarves, or the Dwarden, or um, the Fire Slayers, or the, uh, I don't know, he's a Dwarven God. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's basically a Dwarven God and Dwarves are good at making things. He is known as the Great Maker. Um, so yeah, they work together to create the first Stormcast Eternals. Uh, because he's the Great Maker, he knows how to forge things. The Stormcast Eternals are forged. That's uh, that's the sense that they make of that. Um, and also, the they have elven allies, uh, Malarian and Teclis, and they hide the work that they're doing. They enable, they hide Sigmar and Grungni's work 
from the Chaos Gods so that the Chaos Gods don't know what's going on. Um, and then Malerion as well gifts the Stormcast the ability to rise again once they fall in battle. Gives, like, gives them that ability in order that they can then train over the coming years over and over again at uh, the highest level. And if they fall, they can then rise to just train again and train again. So that's why the Stormcasts get reforged each time they fall in battle. That's why they get reforged. It was a gift from one of the Elven Gods. Or Elven leaders or gods? Is Malerian a god? Hmm. Maybe we'll find that in a future issue for sure. I'm sure somebody's going to comment in the in the description, in the comments below. Um, forces of Death on the next page. Nagash wants to rule over all of the mortal realms turning it into an empire of order and obedience. What a sensible guy Nagash is. Who wouldn't want that? Everything ordered as you desire, and if everything's ordered, there's no wars, nothing like that. Nobody's trying to outdo each other. It just seems so reasonable. I don't get why people like Sigma just wanna get involved and have people have things like free will. What use is free will when the chaos reigns? Anyway, he is legions, Nagash's legions that is, are led by the Mordsarks. Necromancers and Barrow Kings order the mindless hordes forward. Vampires are a match for the greatest mortal heroes. And the Flesh Eater Courts fight alongside the dead. Uh, the Flesh Eater Courts are like sort of vampire zombies. They've got this disease that when they attack a living being that infects them with the desire to become a cannibal, that kind of thing. Um, and the Night Haunts are used as shock troops. The Ossiarch Bone Reapers are one of the most organised forces under Nagash's command and they are basically skeleton warriors. Uh, the warriors made up of bone but the bone is reshaped into like armour um, all the models are sort of like a little bit Eastern like, a little bit Samurai like. Um, and yeah, their bones are shaped into various shapes to make them massive, uh, way bigger than a mortal man would be. Um, huge beastly things. And um, also the, the bones are reshaped into machines of war as well. Um, and once they defeat an enemy, their bones, the, the bones of the defeated are then reshaped into new machines of war. Um, and onto the next page, we get the Battle of Bone and Ash. Uh, this is the Fury Bound, an entire chamber of celestial vindicators, do battle against the numberless hordes of undead to save some mortals in Akshi, the realm of fire. I think it's the realm of fire, although I've not written it in my notes. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's the short story we get in this issue. I, I don't go into the short stories in too much detail because I think it's better if you read them for yourselves. Um, it's nice little. Some of the short stories are really cool and quite exciting, even though they are literally just like a couple of paragraphs long. I find them exciting anyway, but I'm a bit of a simpleton. I'll let you judge for yourself. On to the how to build section. We get how to build Sigmarite Mausoleum, funnily enough, because that's the kit we got in this issue. Uh, it points out some pieces that we won't yet use, and it's four pages in total. Uh, the red areas on the final page you can see behind me. Uh, these are what we're going to get in the future issues, so you can see, as I've said about the bases um, that the mausoleum buildings stand on, um, and the fences and uh, the walls. So we've got some fences already, two fences, walls and gates and stuff like that. That's all the stuff we're going to get on the statue. That's all the stuff we're going to get in future in a future issue, uh, and then we get between tomb and terror in the playthrough section. Um, so this is a nice little playthrough. It's castigators versus chain rasps, and the castigators are having to retreat away from the chain rasps. Oh, they start off the fight in and around the Sigmarite mausoleum terrain, which is really exciting. Um, this teaches us how to interact with terrain, which is handy. So if you're moving over terrain, uh, you can move over it if you want to but you have to count the vertical movement up and down. Um, and it also teaches us how to run, which is very handy considering the castigators need to leg it away. Put some distance between them and the chain rasps in order to get some shots away before the chain rasps eventually, undoubtedly, just charge them and hack them to pieces. And it also, yeah, like I said, it teaches us how to run and to run, you, all you have to do is declare that this unit is gonna run before you move them. Um, and then you roll a dice and add the add that dice roll. Uh, so it's, let's say you roll a six. 
you add that to your total movement so you can move up to that number of inches there. So the chain, not the chain wraps, the castigators, they can move five inches, I think it is. And if you roll a six, you add that six, you can move up to 11 inches then instead of your standard five inch movement. And yeah, a unit that runs cannot shoot, that's a, an important thing to remember. So if you are running back with the chain rasp, you might want to do it two times uh, to put some extra distance. Well, no, mm, it's difficult, it's difficult to say. Um, so yeah, uh, just consider if you do want to get some shots away, um, you might not want to keep running away from uh, an enemy. And the Nighthorn can fly. Ooh, they've got the fly keyword. What does this mean? Well, this basically means you don't have to count the movement, the vertical movement up and down. So let's say the castigate is a leg in it and then there's a fence block in the path. They climb over the fence, it's two inches up, two inches down, or about eight to 10 feet up and eight to 10 feet down. But in game terms, two inches up, two inches down. Um, the Nighthorns will then follow them and chase them through that fence. The Nighthorns, because they're ghostly ghouls, they'll either fly over the fence or just whoosh, wisp their way through the fence. Oh, very exciting. Um, it also updates the war scrolls in this issue. Uh, we got update war scrolls for the Secretors, the Moon Banshees, the Glade Raid Stalkers, uh, and it obviously enables us to practice these new rules with a bunch of units and get um, see how the units do against each other with these new rules of movement and terrain and interacting with the terrain in various ways. One thing that's great about terrain is it adds a tactical element to your game, so you can hide behind a piece of terrain for a certain number of turns and then pop out and start taking shots with your castigators, something like that. And um, yeah, that's about it for this week's issue. But what is coming to the Mortal Realms? Well, issue 12, we are getting a Night Questor. Yes, this is like a dude that goes off on his own or her own and they're wandering through the Mortal Realms with a particular quest to fulfill. Um, Yes, it's a single model, it's an exciting model, it's a nice model, cool model I think. Um, but we knew we were getting that already, didn't we? Because I told you last week. What are we getting in issue 13? Well, 13 is unlucky for some, isn't it? And yeah, it's unlucky for some, if I'm honest, because it's medium dry brush, abandoned black, and Mechanica standard grey paint. It's a painting issue, and there's nothing wrong with that because you need to get these paints and these brushes to enable you to learn new techniques, new painting techniques. Um, but the painting issue is typically a lower value. This isn't like completely low value because you're getting a brush in there as well. But in the future issues where you're just getting two paints, you feel like a little bit cheated. But there's great lore in the magazine as well to look forward to. So don't forget that and don't write off these paint issues. Don't, I'd, I'd suggest don't skip them because there's great lore within the magazine. And uh, yeah, that's about all I've got for you this week, guys. Don't forget to check out the link in the description below to my Patreon, and I'll see you on the battlefield. <laughs>